You're listening to CreatureCast, a podcast about the unexpected world of animals, sponsored by the National Science Foundation. My name is Lee Stevens, and I'm a sophomore at Brown University. Movement is something that comes very easily to humans because of our bones and muscles supporting our limbs. Other organisms have different methods, though. Insects have exoskeletons that support their limbs, and jellyfish have muscles that contract their bell and propel them to the water. But not all jellyfish that you might see in the ocean look like this. Sometimes you'll see a weird floating oval or a heart-shaped blob. They look like they could be dead jellyfish, because they're not pulsing. Except they're not dead, and they're not jellyfish. They're actually a different animal altogether, known as comb jellies, or tinophores. And even though they don't have any obvious moving parts, like the undulating bells of jellyfish, they are moving. When you look at a comb jelly, you'll see eight long stripes running along its surface that occasionally flash rainbow colors. These stripes are called comb rows, and they're what comb jellies use to get around. But the last I heard, disco stripes weren't helping anyone's moves on the dance floor. So how are they helping the comb jellies? First of all, those stripes aren't just stripes. They are rows of small plates that beat back and forth. Each plate is made of over a thousand short whip-like structures sticking off the sides of cells, called cilia. Cilia are the same structures found on the surface of single-celled organisms. Each cilium might only be a few micrometers long, but can create enough power to push the tiny animal towards some food or away from a predator. This works out for single-celled organisms pretty well, seeing as they're pretty small. However, size can be a bit of an issue if you want to get bigger. Because each cilium is just a small mechanical part of the cell it is attached to, it can only produce so much thrust forward and would be unable to move a large mass in any significant way, even if the surface was covered in cilia. Imagine if you tried to move your whole body with just your hair. You wouldn't be moving too fast, if you'd be moving at all. This is a pretty big problem to overcome, so one would think that organisms larger than a single cell would need whole cells and tissues devoted to movement, rather than merely a small structure on the outside of a surface cell. And in fact, this is the case for nearly all animals that can be seen with the naked eye, except for comb jellies. They've continued to use cilia in this way, and have made a few changes to the system that work to their advantage. Their cilia, which are exceptionally long, are not spread out sporadically along their surface, but packed together into plates. By combining a lot of cilia into one compact structure, they can exert a better push force against the water. Think of it as the difference between swimming with your fingers spread apart versus swimming with them pressed together. These plates are organized into rows, which allows for the propelling motion to move down the body of the comb jelly. This is carried out through a domino effect, where the movement of one plate stimulates the movement of the next plate in the row. Thus the wave of paddling travels down the comb row from its mouth backwards and creates a continuous swimming motion. So the next time you're at the beach and you're swimming around and you see one of these guys, pick one up. They're pretty easy to find and they won't sting you. Look for its glittering comb rows, and if you look closer, you might be able to see its moving plates. It's a creature with some powerful little cilia, unlike any others in the animal world, although it might just look like a dead jellyfish. But the occasional rainbow flash might remind you that you're holding a size-defying novelty in terms of movement mechanisms. To learn other cool things about the animal world, go to CreatureCast.org. Thanks to Sophie Tentori and Casey Dunn for their help with the podcast, as well as Tracky Birthday for their songs. I'm Lee Stevens. Thanks for watching.